Good morning and a happy Sabbath to you all. Um, I don't know whether to be excited or to be sad because we are bringing um, an interesting lesson to an end. And before we came on air, we were just discussing how the year has run too quickly. Mm. We are almost ending the first half of 2023. All we can say is that praise be to God. Amen. And we want to thank you so much for joining us from the start of the year and during our Sabbath school discussion. And our prayer is that through our discussion, God has blessed you and you are using and practicing what we have been um, discussing um, throughout the quarter. As you know, the quarter we have been looking at the three cosmic messages, very, very important messages for us during this end time. And it's my prayer that as we review the last lesson for the quarter, God will give us the final message mm. that he has for us um, in the third angel's message for us to live our lives according to the precepts that he has set for us. Amen. Amen. This morning I have um, our regular panelists. Let me start with the ladies. Yeah. Uh, they say ladies first. Let That's me start right. the lady. Um, we have Mrs. Sanita Mills. Anita, happy Sabbath. Happy. How was your week? Oh, fantastic. All right, thank God. Then to my left, I have um, the other El Tegnati. Elder, happy Sabbath. Happy day. All right. So we get into our lesson study. Um, Anita will say our opening prayer for us. Then we will get on with it. Shall we pray? Our most eternal Father, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, we praise you for giving us another opportunity to come and feed on your word. We invite you into our presence. We ask that you come and teach us, transform our lives, so that in the end, we will be fruitful and we will glorify your name. We praise you because we know you've done this and you even do much more in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 So as I said, the whole quarter we have been looking at it, three cosmic um, messages. And let me say that if you have missed any of our lessons, please go and to our page and search for the lessons that you are interested in mm -hmm. and by God's grace he will lead you. We've gone through very interesting ones and um, we've seen deceptions of the enemy, yeah. we've looked at um, the seal of God and the mark mm -hmm. of the beast, we looked at the Sabbath um, and the end time, worshipping the creator, the hour of his judgment and several other lessons. But this morning, which is lesson number 13, we are looking at ablaze with God's glory. Ablaze with God's glory. Our main test is from Revelation chapter 18, verse 1. And permit me to read um, from the New King James Version. It says that after these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory. Amen. 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 As we always do, um, I will take <coughs> initial comments from our discussants, then we will get into the various days discussion. Let me start with the other. Yeah, and um, thank you for at least coming to the end of this lesson study. The challenge is going to be how are we going to leave these lessons mm -hmm. or let me say admonitions that scripture has um, provided us with. When you look at all that we have studied and gone through, lesson 13, you know, makes it so amazing that after the challenges, after the seal of God, after the mark of the beast, after blah, 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 Jesus will win. Mm -hmm. And the lesson introduces us that, introduces another aspect that when everything will appear to be of a loss, then God will shine forth his glory. Amen. And we will, we will say the challenges that we have gone through is mm. worth it. Mm. That is a very gist or the very gist of what I got from this uh, uh, lesson study uh, at, the, at the close of the day. Mm. Yeah. Right. Yes, okay. So for me, my major takeaway this week was that we've been called to be agents of God's glory. Mm. And it is by his design that by revealing his character, mm. we also uh, show forth his glory mm. in the world. Mm. And so that's my major takeaway, that the glory is not uh, apart from us. Uh, we are 
the agents. Mm. We are called to live up to his character mm. so that his glory will be seen in the world. Right. So for me also, I think it's the climax of all that we have done throughout the quarter. And for me, the takeaway is that we have been given um, a glimpse of what is going to happen in the end. And we have seen fulfillment of prophecy mm -hmm. upon prophecy. And what I have to fight for is to make sure that my name is in the Lamb's book. book of life. And to remain there till he comes. Amen. Because um, you can get your name there and, 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 and act and foolishly that I will yeah. do will just take my name out. Yeah. But to make sure that I get my name there and to keep my name in the book of life throughout yeah. um, my life until Christ returns. Amen. 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 On Sunday, we look at preparing for the final crisis. Yeah. Preparing for the, for the final crisis. Yeah. And I want us to read the text that was given to us yeah. in First Thessalonians. Paul's writing yeah. to the people of Thessalonica. Mm. Um, so we are reading from verse 5, yeah, yeah. no, chapter 5. Verses 1 to 6. Anita, please help us. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 to 6. But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. Mm -hmm. For when they say peace and safety, mm -hmm. then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, mm. and they shall not escape. Yeah. Mm. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. Mm. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. Mm. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Yeah. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, mm -hmm. but let us watch and be sober. Amen. 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 I want us to take the first four um, verses, yeah. then later we'll look at um, verse 5 and verse 6. Yeah. Um, what is Paul telling us? I believe that this message is for us as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what is Paul telling us about how the end time will come? Yeah. Um, trying to liken it to a thief and also even the way the pains of um, a pregnant woman, the labor of a pregnant woman. What is the message for us um, trying to put it in context of the final um, moments that we are in yeah. in Earth, Earth's history? I'll take um, comments from both. So maybe let's start from yeah. you know, that. I think that Paul made a very uh, um, outstanding statement mm. that, but of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. Mm -hmm. In other words, he's saying that, look, all the, 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 the explanations have been given. Already. Mm. So, uh, so, like, as a matter of fact, I shouldn't even have reminded you, but, mm. you know, he's, he, when he brings the bat, it means that, well, I still need to go ahead and do that. Then he pointed to the verse 2 that, for ye, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Mm. Because God, Jesus said it, that of the day and hour no man knows. So mm. Paul was only trying to remind the believers, like you said, I like it. Because sometimes, you know, the church, we might feel that we are talking to those outside. No, mm. to those who have heard the message. Mm. And so Paul was reminding us that, look, as you yourself know, mm. that the Lord said that the day and the hour nobody knows. So Paul said, as a thief in the night. For, they, for when they shall say peace, when we think that everything is fine, then obviously, um, let's say something can occur. But then, the Sunday talks about prepare, preparation. Mm -hmm. Preparation for the final crisis. And Paul couldn't have said it better. Looking at the, the examples like that of the woman, Paul gave the example that, look, when a woman is pregnant, you certainly know that you will deliver. Mm -hmm. And so expect that delivery. Mm -hmm. But don't let it surprise you when you begin to feel the uh, bed pants. The labor, because the it is pants. an indication. Yeah, mm -hmm. the labor, it's an indication that the crumbs 
the baby is coming out. Mm. And my mother says something to me that, you see, we don't give birth. Mm -hmm. When the baby wants to come out, that is the pain you go through. Mm. Because the baby will stay there. That's the time. Mm. So it's not like in Ghana, you are for like, or quack or uba, they be acquiring mm. pee. With your person of pee in it, dear. That is it. Mm. And so you see the pain, the, let me put it, you know, women will bleed and all that like a distraction. But at the end, this is a beautiful baby that has come. So Paul is saying that prepare for the delivery. Mm. Mm. Prepare for the de delivery. Once you know you are pregnant, prepare for the delivery. Mm. But surprisingly, you know some women, in the ninth month, they can be working. Oh, me cry, I'm a whole nini, so na, me wana, so eh, but you know, those things, shows a woman who is not ready mm. or we can say shows a christian who is not ready mm. having been cautioned that let's assume that we are all pregnant as christians and we will deliver the delivery will be the coming of the lord we should know that you know in this state of a situation this is what we are expecting mm. and so paul couldn't have used a better analogy to me than what he, he, he used, you are a Christian, so you are pregnant, you must deliver. But as to whether it will be sound or the pregnancy will kill you is, is another thing because some don't go through it well. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's just an example. And for me, I felt that that was a very good thing to, to, an, to, example to, to an example to cite, yes. Right. yes so in addition to what my brother just said, um, clearly we are aware of, um, you know, the the signs and the yeah. times. That's what Paul is saying. Yeah. We are aware, thanks to the word of God. Yeah. And so it, it, in no way should it take us by surprise. Mm -hmm. um, if it does, then we are probably not in the fold of God. Mm. We are in what he calls the people, we are the people of darkness, yeah. which is we are ignorant of the times. So to sum it all up, Paul is saying, listen, you already know how to identify the, the times. Mm -hmm. Okay. You already know that not only will it be destructive, but it will be sudden. Mm. It's not something we can predict. Mm. However, uh, we need to what prepare yeah. for mm. what is coming. So yeah. it's 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 not enough. I think before we we went on, uh, we talked about how it's not just enough to know. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what we, we delve into in the later yeah. right. 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 So so as others said, it's, yeah. it's a very good analogy that yeah. you gave, and even with pregnancy. Uh, women will be told that, I mean, these are the signs that you should expect when mm. you are about to deliver. Yeah. So you see these signs and you still ignore yeah. um, these signs and say that, oh, I'm strong, I can move around. Mm. It comes and it becomes a surprise to you, yeah. meaning that all the signs that, I mean, preceded the coming forth of the child, mm. you ignored. Yeah. And that is the same way that we have been told. Mm. And we'll move on now that we'll move on to the verse 5 and mm. verse 6. Yeah. When <coughs> we we reviewed um, prophecy in Daniel, yeah. Daniel 2, yeah. Daniel 7, and yeah. even in Revelation, yeah. where all the signs have been fore uh, foretold. Mm. When Jesus came, he told his disciples when they came to him, yeah. what are the signs mm. we should expect mm. in, the, in the end time? Then Paul is saying that we have been told all this. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to be sober, yeah. to watch and be sober? Yeah. That, that is um, the words that he used. What does it mean to, to watch and to be sober yeah. during this time because he said he doesn't need to remind us yeah. i've given you all the signs yeah. of my second coming mm. how do we remain um watchful, watchful. and also be sober yeah. whilst we wait for the lord yeah. so the word watchfulness thankfully scripture defined it to be prayerfulness mm. because paul said men ought always to pray mm. and not to faint because Christ, who is our example, is a man of prayer. And virtually on any and everything, he would pray about it. And what struck me the most is the word soberness. Mm -hmm. It means to remain humble, mm. to remain very humble. And this is a virtue every Christian must acquire. Because sometimes, if you are not humble, your difficulties and the problems will make you even curse God. You know, because a Christian would have to go through certain challenges. Some that are stronger than us, but scripture has made it clear that, look, God 
allow them because he will give you the strength to bear that. Mm. And so without stubbornness, it will be very difficult to, to toe the line of scripture. Because yes, some will continue to be praying, and yet what you are requesting for is not forthcoming. Mm. Unless you remain humble, unless you remain sober. Sober is more like in a reflective mode, in a quiet mode, in, in a mode of calmness. When you don't have that, Elder, I'm telling you it will be very difficult mm. because we have seen examples in scripture mm. like that of the wife of Job. He lost everything and it was mind boggling. And she was like, why do you still worship him? Kiss him and die. Mm. And Job said, no, I won't do that. He gave them to me and he will re re reward me again. Mm. And that faith of Job gave him a hundredfold of what God allowed the devil to take away from him. So knowing the truth, we are to, 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 be, to be prayerful mm -hmm. and to be sober. Every time our life must be centered on the pillar of prayer. Mm -hmm. If not, um, I mean, we can't make it. All right. Yes. Mrs. Mills, uh, still on the verse um, 6, mm -hmm. it says that, therefore, let us not sleep. How do we avoid this uh, trap that we do not fall asleep? I mean, our eyes can be widely open, but we'll be sleeping. How do we avoid that? Okay, so I think in order for us to really um, appreciate what it means not to sleep and mm. to be sober, yeah. let's look at um, how a drunken person mm. or a person who is high on drugs acts. Mm. You realize that the person is unaware of his or her surroundings, yeah. very erratic behavior, mm. and it normally results in harm. Either the person will harm himself or yeah. harm others. Yeah. So this sobriety is being focused. Mm. Now you cannot be focused when you are asleep, because when you are asleep, you are not aware of yeah. your surroundings, but you need to be awake. So how we avoid it is to ensure that we are intentional mm. about Bible study, yeah. about our time with God, mm. because when we take a step back and study the word and spend time with God, he draws our attention to the happenings of the world. Yeah. But when we engulf ourselves with a lot of work, a lot of um, worries of the world, you mm. realize that you lose focus. Yeah. And so the only way is the word mm. and spending quality time in, of course, in addition to prayer, like Elder has said, mm. else we will be like a drunken or high person. Mm. You are unaware of the times. It will just, and it will happen to you and you will not even realize it. Mm. You, yeah. you will not be prepared. A drunken person is very um, vulnerable. Mm. Anything can happen. Sometimes they even say things they don't even Remember. know they've said. Yeah. They end up even making promises that are binding mm. afterwards. Mm. So um, to answer the question, how can we avoid it, is we need to be very, mm. very um, um, particular about the time we spend with God. This yeah. is the time we should be very um, focused on the Word of God mm. because that's the only way. If mm. we allow ourselves to be saturated by so many things, the enemy will through that distract us. Mm. And by the time we realize, like um, we've been told in the Word, we will be taken by surprise yeah. and we will become like um, people of darkness. Yeah. Mm. And also the watchfulness I wanted to add is that it, the, what prayer does, you see, oftentimes we think prayer is all about just like a grocery store. You just yeah. go, you have your list, and then you pick from the aisle. No, prayer actually, you know, elevates us to God. It's yeah. actually, without prayer, you can't even be sober. Uh -huh. Because in order to have a very good prayer life, you have to be, take a step back. You have to listen to God. So for me, let, let's um, restrict the prayer to... Is God, I need mm -hmm. that um, in terms of wants, but asking God to, to keep us strong. Um, Elder cited the Lord Jesus. I doubt He would have been able to do what He did for us without prayer because there are so many instances that um, your strength will not be commensurate to what 
you are yeah. faced with. Yeah. And the only way that you'll be strengthened is through prayer. Mm. Yeah. When we ask for the Holy Spirit. Mm. And so watchfulness and sobriety mm. is very important. And the yeah. only way we can, you know, be watchful and sober is when we pray and also when we study the word of God and allow him to speak to us. Someone mm. rightfully said prayer is us speaking to God, but studying the word of God is him also speaking to us which is very important amen all right so um to top it up and buttress what um, mrs mills has said and to end sunday and whilst we are preparing for the final crisis Mm -hmm. paul still admonishes still in first thessalonians 5 this time from uh, chapter 5 this time from verse 8 that but let us who are of the day be sober Mm -hmm. putting on the breastplate of faith Mm -hmm. and love and that's a helmet, the hope of salvation. Yeah. When you have that hope of salvation, you always be vigilant. Yeah. When you are in expectant of something good and you are told not to sleep, yeah. to watch, you will make sure that you will stay awake and watch until that thing happens. Yeah. And therefore, Paul admoni- ad- admonishes that we need to have that faith, yeah. like a breastplate. Whatever that comes, it becomes like a shield. Yeah. It, doesn't, it doesn't penetrate. We have that faith of God and the hope and expectation of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ to save us. Amen. 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 Knowing the truth, um, one of my, my, my the text that I like is in John 8, 32, mm. where it says that the truth shall set you free. Yeah. When you know the truth, um, you will not be afraid of anything because mm. whatever that you are doing, you know that it is the right thing that you are doing. But yeah. if you are not so sure, it becomes difficult to even go through mm. our normal life yeah. that is in our secular world now when we come to christ he says that we should know the truth yeah. now the question is that in this world and age we have studied deceptions how do we know the truth how do we decipher the the truth from what is false because without doing that it will be difficult for us to prepare for the final events that are supposed to come. Yes, Elder. Yeah, so thankfully, scripture has pointed out what is false. Mm -hmm. And then more graciously, scripture pointed out what is truth. Mm. And then even gave us the Apo. You know, Apo is not allowed in examination where you will get to know the, the answer to the question. Yeah. But the Lord said, I've put before you life and death but choose life you know then the teacher tells you i'll bring number nine so you prepare with the number nine now we've gone through the three cosmic messages and the sabbath in contention false prophecies living anyhow and all that we've been told that will lead us astray and so knowing the truth will set us free but the challenge is when we know the truth we must do something about it and that's where we all fall short Mm -hmm. now in our previous submissions we were looking at the preparation and all that but you see like uh, mrs mill said we need to be prayerful you would not be prayerful if you don't if you do not appreciate the challenges ahead if you cannot decipher what it truly means to be a christian prayer Having a good prayer life will be a difficult thing. Mm. You know, but when you know that, yes, Satan exists. Look, the guys will say, in Abuaji Tumun, what I'm about to say shouldn't happen. But I can die and leave my children. The devil can test my wife by bringing something my way that can take my life away. And God will allow that. Same way my wife can die. Same way your child can die. These are the things that we face every day. Does it make me less a Christian? No. But God has allowed that because his children in the Bible went through that. Mm. And we are no different. And so I wrote here that knowing ahead of time what the journey entails makes you never to sleep. Mm -hmm. Because look, the devil never sleeps. Why do you sleep? And we have defined sleep to mean not that the normal one we will rest. Because that one God said, even if you don't want to rest, nature will put you to sleep. Mm -hmm. You understand but i mean do not season pray mm. and this thing is an individual thing unfortunately 
It is individual because the church will not teach you. The church can speak about it. Elders will speak about it, that be prayerful. Pastors will do same. Shepherds will do same. You know? But then you must start it at the home. Mm -hmm. How is your family life like? Do you have morning devotions? Do you have evening devotions? Do you welcome the Sabbath? When you come home, do you share some of the challenges with your wife? And do you pray about it? You know, because, look, let me give you an example. This week, just before the week will end, there was a colleague friend of mine, we worked together. And I made, I referred somebody to him for an assistance. And the person gave him money, and this colleague friend of mine couldn't be found again. The person called, he called, and he called me. I've been calling, your friend is not picking. I also called, he wasn't picking. When I got home, I shared with my wife that, oh, can you believe that this is what Bernard has done? And his, my wife just said, like you've been doing, you should have prayed about this thing before, you know, you, you, you directed him to him. And I said, well, you have a point there. This time I didn't. I just took it like a friend. But you know what? God has still made a way. Mm. Let me go to that, my friend. And I went there with a the guy. Oh, I gave it to somebody. The person cannot be found. But when we come, I said, my brother, your money is not lost. Let's pray about it. And just before the week will end, on Wednesday, my friend called me. I've been able to trace the guy, and he's taking the money. Mm. It took prayer. Mm. What if he were not able to trace the guy? It would have been like the whole thing is a plan something. You know, so there are things that will hit at us, for which reason we need to pray. Mm. We may leave the house and never to come back, for which reason we need to pray. So that anywhere the Lord allows us to, to, to end our work on earth, we may be ready anywhere to leave and go. But if that prayerfulness is not there, then probably I have not come to the realization that this is a warfare, Elder, mm. like you said. Mm. It's a warfare, and warfare, a bullet can come from anywhere. So, the, 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 like you pointed us to uh, Thessalonians the 8, mm, the, the, the help of what salvation. Because yeah. if you leave it on, a bullet could go through your head. Mm. Mm. The breastplate of what? Righteousness, that shield. Mm. If you leave it, a bullet can go through. So, the armor of God is the whole what? military uh, uniform mm. that stops the darts, the fairy darts of the enemy. Mm. So, we need to. To, to be prayerful. And that I pray that every Christian would have it. Okay. Yes, I yeah. So, mm. um, in addition to prayer, being prayerful, the Monday lesson was, you know, telling us about the significance of knowing the truth. Yeah. And for me, what I enjoyed about it is the fact that um, there's assurance that if you are willing, mm -hmm. as the John 7, 17 said, so yeah. far as there's a willingness to know the truth, Christ will gracefully grant you the truth Amen. and then the truth will liberate you mm. and so to your to your question what is the truth i mean john 17 17 is so explicit about it yeah. he says that sanctify them by your word for your word, word is what truth. Is truth so the truth here is the word of word god, of god. Yeah. Exactly. so once we grasp the word of god mm. it will be easy for us to mm. you know detect the falsehood mm. and like this a very popular example we give when it comes to Bank of Ghana, he won't come and, you know, uh, emphasize so much on the counterfeit. Mm. He will come and teach you that when you see a note or a coin, mm. this is what you are the supposed features, to look that's for. It. So that anything that you find that doesn't have those characteristics, mm. you immediately know I that speak. it is not the truth. And so to put it in context, we have the word. The word has revealed to us um, the happenings in the world even before they even took place yeah. um, even including the successions of the kingdoms yeah. and it has accurately been fulfilled mm -hmm. and so this is what is said and then also the one to come we've also been told about mm. how the worldly powers and all those things so basically knowing the truth is being saturated with the word of God mm. and making sure that we not only know sorry no it's intellectually mm -hmm. but we also have an experiential mind you yeah. the word also became flesh yeah. and dwelt among us so the knowledge of truth is not just the theoretical one but having that relationship with the word which is jesus christ mm -hmm. having a living you know um, uh, how do you call it a working relationship yeah. with him right thank Amen. you so in summary 
all that we have said is that the truth is right in front of us. Yeah. The Bible. I remember during the interaction Jesus had with the Pharisees and the, and the kings. Mm. He said, the truth, he said, the, he asked, what is truth? He said, truth is standing right in front of you. That's it. And in our case, we have the Bible. And all that we have spoken about in the three angels' messages, they are all recorded in the yeah. Bible. What is supposed to ha happen in the end time? Everything is recorded yeah. in the Bible. So whatever that we want to know about the truth in the end time, everything is right in front of us, which is the Bible. And as you have said, with prayer and with the study of the Word of God, with the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. we will be able mm -hmm. to know the truth, yeah. and that truth will set us free. Amen. 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 Now, the Reformation continues. This is also another interesting um, lesson, where um, through the Bible and we were given a peek um, I mean, that is interesting about the Bible. Mm. We are given history. The Bible gives us history. We know how this whole reformation started. Yeah. Then throughout the ages after the Bible, we also saw people who also took up the mantle mm. um, of the Pauls, of the Matthews, of all the other apostles and still fought to make sure that this word, the truth, is preserved. Now, let's read the first... Um, paragraph of the Tuesday and um, very very apt. Yeah. It says that God has raised up a last day people to stand on the shoulders of the great reformers of yeah. the past with the Bible as their only creed. Mm -hmm. Christ alone as their only source of salvation. Yeah. The Holy Spirit as their only source of strength sure. and the return of our Lord as the consummation of all their hopes. Amen. Truths long obscured by the darkness of error and tradition including the true Bible Sabbath, will be proclaimed to the world just before the return of Christ. Amen. 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 Now, let's read Revelation 18.1, which is our key text. And let's, uh, just to reiterate what has been written in Revelation 18.1. Mm. And let's see what John tells us about um, the angel who has this message. Yeah. And this way, is, it's, it's not a message of doom, like the three angels' message, but he has a certain message. What three things do we identify in this um, angels' message, and how do we illustrate it as yeah. we look at the Reformation, the continuation of the Reformation? So, uh, Revelation 18.1. 18, yeah. Yes. Anita, you can repeat that okay. text Revelation for us. Revelation chapter 18, verse 1. After these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory. Amen. 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 So the writer was asking that, what are the three things that John mentions in this text? And how do we relate it? And which of these three things um, can help us keep up that reformation, that fire burning? Because it would be sad that all the fight that um, these great reformers have put um, in mm. and making sure that we sustain the torch of Jesus Christ. Uh, we, don't, we don't pick up this torch and we let it die. Yeah. Um, what are some of the key things that we pick from this um, text that can help us keep this fire burning, as we say? Yes, Elder. Yeah. So, Tuesday, um, you know, the writer made it very clear. Just like um, after the three cosmic messages, mm. God didn't end there, mm. but he supplied the power mm. to be able to accomplish the work. Mm. And so here, when it says, the angel came down from heaven, mm. having great power or great authority, and his appearance, brought glory, I mean like authority, mm. such that it was a positive one. Unlike the other symbols that were used, you see a beautiful, but his power is to suppress and all that. No, this one brought liberty. Mm. And so here, this is the way the Sabbath school put it so beautifully, that the angel who comes down from the glorious presence of God <clears throat> in the throne room of the sanctuary is mm. commissioned to proclaim God's last message of mercy. Mm and to warn the inhabitants of the earth of what is coming upon the planet earth. The text says that this angel came with what? Great, the great glory. Authority. And glory was explained in the Greek word, but we don't need that. 
Now, Jesus used the same word in Matthew 10, 11, where Jesus said that, I'm giving you what? Power and authority. authority. Mm -hmm. So that you can make these disciples of all nations, heal the sick, do all that, blah, blah, blah. We saw that when you read the spirit of prophecy, it gives you a clear picture that when the end is so near now, God, God will raise young folks who will fear nothing. Mm -hmm. Even if you come with a sword at them, they will still say Jesus is king. Mm -hmm. Their lives doesn't matter to them. If it will be now, in the next two, three days, God is going to raise Elder, myself, our sister, and others to be doing this way. We will not fear. And so that symbol, that angel that came, is going to work through humans, and mm -hmm. God is going to supply that. So that reformation will continue, because that will be the last day, the very last day reformation. Because the three angels' message with, messages, we started preaching them since after 1844 till now, is well over 100 years. And yet, God will not end it there. Revelation 18 gave the promise that, look, when the time is up, this is what I'm going to do again. And this time, like Joel chapter 2 said, the Lord will rain his spirit on the young and they will proclaim his word. And nothing, absolutely nothing can stop them, just like the wild dancers. Death, government setting up laws to bar them from preaching, they will still go ahead and preach. Why would they do that? They will do that because the owner of this earth has promised them that the life that you have, I gave you. If mm. they take it, I'll give it to you again. Mm. Mm. Amen. 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 Anita, what hope do we get? Um, as Elder explained, this angel illuminates the entire earth. Yes. Not part of the earth, no. but a certain group of people or tongue and all that. Yeah. All the earth. And he says that he has authority. And we also read from Matthew um, that we have been given the authority yeah. to go out. And for me, I see um, the message as being the light yeah. that illumines the whole world. That's it. Um, knowing that authority has been given to us, what assurance should this give us? And what confidence should this give us to also go out and keep up the work of the great reformers that we have? Mm. Um, I think the assurance is that the work will definitely be successful. Mm, I think yes. for, for humans, what kind of gives us some cold feet whenever we are undertaking a venture is uncertainty. Mm. But this is certain mm. because there's no way that we will have authority from on high and fail. Mm. If we have any reason to doubt, we need to go back to history mm. and look at how the reformers were empowered at every period in time, from mm. the time of Paul, the apostles, the disciples, even to Martin Luther, how mm. God empowered them. Mm. And even though they were not, um, you know, uh, they did not have the numbers, the, the impact was great. So we can imagine what mm. God will do to us. And mind you, the, the angel here is referring to those who are going to proclaim the message. Yeah. So for those of us who think that we are just going to sit aloof and some angel yeah, will come yeah. from here, no, we, it re represents a people that God will empower in the last day. And who are those? They are those of us who have accepted to keep the commandments of yeah. God and the faith, and we have the faith of Jesus. And so for me, it's an assurance that um, I shouldn't fear. Yeah. The work is done. I just have to avail myself so that I will be a channel through which the work yeah. will be done. Yeah. Mm. And it's important for us to um, also realize that um, we are very, very, uh, how do you call it, important in this work. Mm. God is going to use us as agents. Um, sometimes we often say, if we don't praise God, he can raise stones and... No, actually, God had the option of having stones and but he decided to create us. It means that he wants us to participate in the work. And so my admonition, in addition to this assurance, is that we should avail ourselves. Let's not think that we can sit aloof and be lackadaisical, and then when the time comes, all of a sudden some spontaneous power will come from them. It's going to be as a result of the daily choices we've made to work with mm. him. So if we are already... Um, accepting the role as last day people and we are living up to it then he's going to empower us 
to mm. take up. That is if we are alive by that time, yeah. or whichever people are, are ready. If we look at Martin Luther and all these reformers, they availed themselves. They, they stood up into, um, against opposition. Mm. Can you imagine one man mm. against an entire belief system? Yeah, yeah. But we realized that it was not by his mind, yeah, neither by his power, like, just yeah. like the Bible said, but by the Spirit of God. And that's exactly what is going to happen in the last days amen so we have been given that responsibility to also go out there yeah. and keep the fire burning yeah. hold that torch to keep it burning mm. so that everyone will hear this everlasting gospel mm. that people will be drawn to christ and all of us will get that favor before christ when he comes a second time on wednesday we look at god's glory fills the earth and the writer tried to remind us that the great controversy of course we know is about good and evil but also it is about redeeming the reputation of christ yeah. and god vindicating yeah. or being vindicated that he's sure. a just god and that has been the point that the enemy stresses that god is unjust mm -hmm. because why do you cast people he, you don't love us i mean look at what you did to me and that is the kind of song that he has been singing in the minds of sinners yeah. uh, sorry or in the minds of human beings and that was the same story he told Eve when he came if God loves you why will he restrict you mm -hmm. I mean you will not surely die you'll be like him he doesn't want you to know this and all that so these are accusations that the enemy has put forth yeah. against the character of God and all that God is trying to do is to let the whole world know mm -hmm. the love that he has for us now in reading um, about the glory of God, what did the writer point to us about the glory of God and his character? And what assurances should this give us about the accusations of, of, of the enemy? That, I mean, our God is indeed a just God. What um, lessons do we pick from um, what the writer gave us in the Wednesday lesson? So I'll take yeah. comments from both sides. Yeah. Okay, so um, what the writer sought to um, bring to our attention is that the glory of God is revealed when we live up to his character. Because mm -hmm. the enemy's argument is that the law you put is impossible for anyone to what, to keep. It's mm -hmm. too rigid. It's, it's too uh, harsh. Yeah. So by we being people of the book or by we um, living up to the character of God, we, we become a testimony that the law is not um, something that is impossible to keep. Our God yeah. is not a harsh, stern God. The law rather liberates us. Mm -hmm. We become evidence, and that is where the glory is shown. Mm -hmm. So we become a testimony to the world and also to the evil forces that look at these people that you claim that the law is supposed to be burdensome and rigid mm -hmm. and, and look at them, they are living up to it. Yeah. And so that is through, that is how god's glory is what revealed when we also emulate his character mm. and i like a statement that was um, in the, the so it says revealing his love in our personal lives reveal his glory mm -hmm. his character to the world yeah. and so it tells us once again we are the agents of his glory god can sit in heaven and then there's no evidence of his glory and claim that he has glory there must be evidence there, he must show working maybe in, in, in today's parlance, mm -hmm. there must be evidence that indeed his law is not rigid, he's loving, he's a just God, and that there, there must be people to, to be there for him to show that, look, these people, they've been able to what? To emulate my character, which is my law. And so it is evidence that I am loving, I am just, and that my law is not an impossible burden, just like the way the enemy claims it to be. Yes, all Amen. Amen. Yes. Um, I wonder how men are able to to believe this mm -hmm. that God is unjust. We visited a certain country. Then I was telling my colleague friend that look, even in a sinful world, look at these beautiful things, even in a sinful world. I wonder how heaven would look like. Mm. And so for me, 
I understand this perfectly and clear that if in our disobedience God is still kind you even in Ghana there are places you go and your soul is satisfied you see such a beauty you know when we went to Bonsu mm -hmm. I took a shot of the place and then one of my friends was why are you in Canada I said no Ghana I said really I said yes <laughs> <laughs> you know the greens and what have you mm. so I know that like Mrs. Mill said, if we live the character of God, our lives become beautiful mm -hmm. and God's glory is radiated and others can see that. Mm -hmm. Because here, what did God do to show forth his glory through Moses? When Moses requested, he said, look, you can't see me and leave. You are a sinner. I am even going to hide you because yes, I will come but I will hide you. And so God came, I'm the Lord, God, God, and Moses, you could see, the, the, the writer did it well, was even running. Mm -hmm. God was coming, he was running because his glory will slay him. And he has to hide. And when God got so close, you know, Moses was pushed to the cleft. Mm -hmm. And so when he even realized that the, the pressure and everything was gone and he had to turn and watch, Scripture said he saw the back of God. Just the back of God. When Moses came down, mm. the people were afraid of him. Mm. Because Scripture said that Moses' hair became white, henceforth as wool throughout his life. And his face was shining and was brightening and they could not even look at him. And so first of all, when we leave that Christ-like character, people see God in us. Everything you do is beautiful. They say, oh, where do you, hey, where do you, on there, hey, where do you, where do you, and sometimes they'll say, oh, hey, as for Brad, you know these things, he will not allow it. I mean, you know, people know that you have a standard. And that is the kind of thing that Christ expects. That when you leave my character, because the, the writer said that God's glory is his character. Exactly. The earth will be filled with the glory of God when we are filled with the love of God and our characters are changed mm. by that redeeming love. Mm. And so first and foremost, when we live that kind of life alone, God's glory is seen. Amen. And how much more when he comes? Mm. I don't know how I can describe that. That's why... McFinley said, well, it shouldn't be of a surprise because we know he will come, we know he will create a new world. But for us as well, the surprise element will come because it's beyond what we have imagined in our heads. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought the thing was just green, not knowing a goal that is even transparent. I can see myself in it. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. And so I believe that this earth indeed will be filled with the glory of God now and even when he comes again mm. through the character of his children amen yeah amen all right so we see that um, all the accusations of satan yeah. was even um dispensed of Absolutely. when he stepped down to come and die yeah. for us so the writer said that jesus's life his death and resurrection yeah exploded that myth amen that myth that jesus sorry god is an unjust god mm -hmm. the love that he showed us stepping down yeah come and die for mm -hmm. his children is just his character yeah. he's good he's yeah. compassionate and that is the kind of glory that illuminates the whole mm -hmm. earth mm -hmm. christ has died for us yeah. and that should let us know that satan and all the lies that he's spewing mm -hmm. about christ is false yeah. because who will go and die for his mm -hmm. brother or his sister mm -hmm. when he has not committed any sin yeah yeah it is only christ yeah that will do that and yeah. it's because of the love that he has for us so mm -hmm. he's a loving god he is not an unjust god mm -hmm. he's a loving god and that is why he has even given us all the choices yes to make the choice yeah and in the end i mean as we read from a uh, revelation mm -hmm. we'll join the um, the angels in yes. saying that worthy is the lamb yes. who was slain yes. to receive power and riches and wisdom Lord. and strength and honor and glory and blessing and the enemy himself will say that God we are just. Thou are just. I mean the the, the 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 Bible tells us that the sinners will come and look at their record 
and you say that God, you are just. Because all that I have done, I am, am, you are justified for yes. me to go into the lake of fire. Yes. Amen. Amen. Now we mentioned lamb yeah. um, in Revelation 5 uh, 12. And that is the last um, lesson mm. on Thursday. He said that the lamb and the lamb, the slain lamb, Amen. just another uh, 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 description yeah. of who this lamb that we are talking yeah. um, about. We, we know of what was happening before Christ came. Mm. Um, when you sin, mm. the rituals that you needed mm. to go through for your sins to be forgiven. And as I mentioned uh, before, Christ came and he said that I am the only person who can stand and die for the creatures. Yes. I mean, that is, that is the beauty <coughs> of it. I created yeah. you and you have sinned and I have to come and die in your stead. Yeah. So we see a humble person Very humble. who is um, God, mm. but he stood down to come and die yeah. for us and to take the place of that lamb. That, I mean, when you sin, you need to speak all your uh, sins upon for the priest to go and slaughter mm. and to sacrifice for your sin to be forgiven. This lamb was slain because of the love that he has for us. I don't know what final comments that you want to tell us. created us and he still said that I will come and sacrifice my whole my, my own life yeah. in place of the creatures that I have made what final comments do we have for um, our viewers let me start with um, Anita I would say that this is the crux of the matter mm. um, uh, I can't say the crack and the same mm. so the crack and say Christ has died mm. Christ is risen mm. and he'll come again a hymn writer said, this is the threefold truth Amen. on which our faith depends. Mm. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Mm. Christ is the heart of the matter. Amen. All that we've been talking about, the three cosmic messages, mm. all that we are learning, mm. and all that we seek to become, Christ is the heart of the matter. Amen. Without him, it's in vain. Mm. He's the reason that we are here and he's the one who will empower us and so my advice is that we shouldn't lose sight of Christ in all that we are attempting to do yeah. because it is possible to be prayerful to be watchful to be sober and you may end up losing sight of Christ mm. it's very possible but let us keep Christ at the center of everything we do every prayer every bible study every article the message we send mm. as the people of god mm. let's make sure that it is yeah. christ-centered mm. let us not be tempted to make it a legalistic something an attempt to show off christ and christ alone. amen amen Isada. so i will end my to seal what mrs mill said romans 5 six and eight just to emphasize that what she said is true that the heart and soul of the whole message of the bible is christ, christ. Mm. paul said in romans 5 8 let me start with six for when we were yet without strength mm. in due time christ died for the ungodly and then verse 8 says it all that but god commanded his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, mm. Christ died for us. Amen. So having created us, he knew that even if as of today the fall had not occurred and mm. we are holy beings, in future mm. somebody may still do that. Mm. And so Christ has ever, was and has ever and will always be ready mm. to redeem his creation. Amen. And so that shows how important we are in the sight of God. Amen. 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 So dear friends, the entire quarter's lesson, the center of this message is Christ. And therefore the admonishment is that we put Christ at the center of everything that we do. And when we do that, we will not be deceived into going into the enemy's camp, mm. but we will remain in the camp 
of God. Amen. Amen. We'll continue next week. Uh, we'll be starting a new lesson next yeah. week. Uh, please join us, study our lesson. If you have any questions, comments, and uh, you want to visit us, you are free to visit us. Mm -hmm. We'll be glad to receive you. May God bless you all. Amen. Amen. We have um, a word of prayer from the elder. So, our Father in heaven, thank you so much for today. It's a wonderful day. And you have visited us through your word once again. Father, what is most and more important is that we plead with you to continue to let our names remain in the Lamb's Book of Life. And that in the event also that our names are not there, we ask that you cleanse us. And may we be purged and be sanctified by your word. Because you always speak to your children. Father divine, we pray for our friends and families who are watching online. Whatever their difficulties, whatever their problems, may you visit them at their homes and touch them and heal them. And let them be set free through these messages and lesson studies. We thank you and we bless your name for having heard and answered our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for joining. God bless you.